Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweet. Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Whenever you serve bread, serve it the way millions of families enjoy it most. Spread with delicious, nourishing parquet margarine. Get your family off to a bright start at breakfast by adding parquet's delicate, satisfying flavor to slices of tempting golden brown toast. When you send Johnny off to school, send along the appetizing goodness of parquet. Spread in nourishing lunchbox sandwiches. At dinner time, make your fresh muffins and crusty brown rolls a real pride and joy by spreading them with delicious parquet margarine. Yes, parquet makes all kinds of bread taste extra good. Adds extra nourishment, too, because parquet is high in food energy value and is fortified by Kraft so that every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So, for flavor that satisfies for energy and vitamin A, buy parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. Join our friend, the great Gildersleeve. It's a bright, snappy Saturday morning in October, the kind of a day that's supposed to make a man feel like working. And as Gildersleeve stands in his front parlor smoking his after-breakfast cigar, he glances out of the window, and sure enough, he sees a task. Leroy, I thought I told you to rake up those leaves. Didn't I? You didn't say when to rake them. I suppose you want to wait till they're covered with snow. The leaves must be raked now, Leroy, Today? Today? Day. Why can't I do them Monday afternoon, Unc? First thing Monday afternoon. Because I want them done today. I don't see why they couldn't wait till Monday. Don't argue, my boy. You haven't a single thing to do all day today. It's my day off. Can't I wait till Monday? No. You started them Wednesday, but you didn't finish. You must learn to concentrate, my boy. Buckle down. Do a job right. Finish it up. Could you help me, Unc? Between us, we could finish it up in a hurry. Uh, I'm busy, Leroy. Oh, you're just sitting around. I am not sitting around. I'm worrying about finding some kind of work so I can support you and Marjorie. I wish all I had to do was worry. What did you say, Leroy? <laughs> Nothing. Well, get at those leaves and right now. Oh, before you start, did you clean up your room this morning? Oh, sure, I, I cleaned it. Will it bear inspection, Leroy? Well, gosh, if you're going to go over it with a magnifying glass... Never mind that. Did you make your bed? I could have forgotten that. <laughs> Confound it, Leroy. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I looked at your room yesterday, and it was a regular pigsty. How can you stand to live in it? I don't know. I'm just naturally sloppy, I guess. <laughs> oink, oink. And don't be so smart, young man, or I'll make you smart. In a certain place. Understand? Oh, oh sure. Now go upstairs and do your room at once, so it can stand inspection. Okay. Find way to spend Saturday. Leroy, have you done your practicing? Leroy. What did you say, young? Have you practiced your piano? Uh, some. Some? I pay good money for those lessons, young man. You get over to that piano and start practicing right now. What about my room? Practice the piano. What about the leaves? Practice the piano. Sit down on that bench and don't get off of it for two hours. Gosh, I'll be working all day Sunday, too. I won't have any fun at all. What's Leroy beefing about now? Marjorie, have you done your room this morning? Oh, yes, Uncle Moore. Oh, good girl. Make your bed? Of course, I always do. Leroy, why can't you be more like your sister? Ah, oh, she makes me sick. Uh, now, young man, we're all supposed to do our part around here. Excuse me, Mr. Gill, please. Have you made your bed, Bertie? Uh... <laughs> I mean, uh, what is it? Miss Marjorie, those curtains from your room has been sitting in my laundry tub for three days. I can't do my laundry till you get them out of there. Marjorie? <laughs> 
sound this perfect. Leroy, practice the piano. Ha, 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 Mr. Smarty Pants. And you go wash those curtains, young lady. By George, we're going to have some new work habits around here. When we start something, we're going to finish it. We've got to learn to concentrate. I don't hear you counting, Leroy. I can't count and play at the same time, Unc. Well, try. Four and one and two and three and... That's wrong, Leroy. I told you I can't count and play at the same time. I bet nobody can. All the great pianists know how to count, Leroy. Well, they don't count so you can hear them. You remember when you took me to hear that guy and we sat in the front row? He never counted once. I was watching him. He doesn't have to count anymore, but he knows how. Now, stop arguing. Count to yourself if you want to. Okay. Play it right, my boy. I'm trying to. That's the spirit. You're not trying, Leroy. I am, Mom. Well, don't make the very same mistake every time. <laughs> This is a tough piece, and I'm just starting it besides. Oh, well, it's going to sound very nice when you've learned it. I wonder when that will be. <laughs> well, that's the boy. Oh! <laughs> For goodness sake, Leroy, go back and play it right. Do I have to start at the beginning? No, no, no just go back a little way. <laughs> okay. Leroy, you're not concentrating. Maybe I haven't got any talent, huh? You learn to play whether you got talent or not. <laughs> Trouble is, you don't practice enough. Now, when I... Uh, I'll see who it is, huh? No, you won't. You'll sit right where you are and keep practicing. Well, good morning, Gilly. Oh, for a good morning, Judge. Come on in. Well, Leroy practicing. Very pretty. Boy plays nicely. Yeah. <laughs> that shows how much you know, Judge. What's on your alleged mind? Not a thing, Gildy, not a thing. Can't an old friend just drop in without having something on his mind? He can, but he doesn't. <laughs> if you come over here again to pry into matters of my employment, Judge... Well, I haven't, but now that you bring it up... It why... may interest you to know that I'm considering a number of possibilities. Oh, you've been saying that for weeks. What about uh, Nelson Humpstone? Did you get anywhere with him? Humpstone? He's nothing but a four-flesher. They're closing down the factory, Judge. I wasn't interested in that job anyway. I have another idea now. That's the trouble with you, Throckmorton. You never stick to anything. Dag nabbit, I don't believe you know how to concentrate. <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> concentrate. I mean, keep your mind on your work. I could go out now if you and the judge want to talk. You get right back to that piano. We'll go into my study. Come on, Horace. You're always opening your big mouth. Sit down, Judge. Have a cigar? Mm, not so soon after breakfast, thank you. Good. <laughs> you know, Horace, the more I think of it, the more I miss my old job at the waterworks. That wasn't a bad job. It's gone now. Water over the dam. Mayor Terwilliger should be indicted, appointing his own cousin as water commissioner. Let's not judge him hastily, Gildy. McCarthy may be a very good man. Not if he's a relative of the mayor. Any relation of Terwilliger's would be an incompetent in public office. Point is, Gildy, that he's in public office and you're not. Yeah. Oh, come in. Yes, the mail just came, Mr. Gilsey. Quite a lot of it, but nothing very good. Oh, the mail. Thank you, Bertie. You're welcome. <coughs> now, Gildy, we've got to look this job situation in the face. Uh, pardon me, Horace, while I look this mail in the face. Doggone it, Gildy, there you go again. Can't you keep your mind on anything? Uh oh. Here's a note from Nelson Humpstone, Judge. Huh? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, listen to this. Dear Gildersleeve, I'm flying back to the home office of International Bolt and Screw for a couple of days on very short notice, and it looks like they're planning to convert to civilian production instead of closing down here. So don't make any commitments till you hear from me. I'll call you from Detroit as soon as I can. Nuff said, Nelson Humpstone. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Fine fellow, that Humpstone. Nuff said. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> well, Gildy, I must say that sounds very promising, very hopeful. Oh, Humpstone's a big man, Judge. What did I tell you? He isn't talking about any two-for-nickel proposition. He might want an assistant manager. 
or a sort of an associate manager. Maybe you'll want me to come in there to the home office, talk things over with the big shots. I don't know about that. What else would he be phoning me from Detroit? I ought to be ready to leave in a minute's notice. I wonder if I could get a plain priority. I think you're working a little fast, Gildy. That's the way to get things done, Judge. I suppose Humpy could take care of my hotel reservations. Oh, for goodness sake, you're talking just like yeah, a... Come in. Uh, what is it, Bertie? Mr. Gilsey, the water stopped running and all the faucets in the house, nothing comes out. What? The water's off? <laughs> I'll bet the pump's busted, yeah. And the snifter valve. Must be off all over town. By George, I've been waiting for this moment. Let's call up the mayor's cousin and complain, Judge. What's his name now? Oh, now, Gildy, have a heart. His name's McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at that telephone. I'll pin his ears back. I'll blast him. No. No, I know something better, Judge. I'll call him up at his house at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. In nourishing meals at home and in lunches at work, you busy home front soldiers need the best of energy foods. And luckily, some of America's best energy foods cost very little. Economical parquet margarine, the delicious craft quality spread for bread, is a shining example of a food high in energy value, yet extremely low in money cost, and low in ration point cost, too. Kraft makes parquet margarine, and of course, Kraft uses only top quality, highly refined vegetable oils. And that explains why parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve. What's more, Kraft fortifies parquet margarine so that every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So for important food energy, for important vitamin A, and equally important for a fresh, delicate flavor that's sure to satisfy, serve parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Tomorrow, buy Parquet. It's made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to our story. Only a few minutes have passed, but Gildersleeve's household is as busy as a beehive. Anticipating an urgent call from Detroit, he's stationed Bertie near the phone to grab it, and he's assigned Marjorie to run upstairs and pack an overnight bag for him in case he has to leave town on short notice. The great man himself is in the living room, pacing up and down the rug, and turning over in his mind such important matters as plain priorities and what salary he should demand. And through it all, little Leroy, like the young Mozart, plugs doggedly away at his music. Leroy, read the notes. Read the notes. I am. You are not. Well, you can see for yourself what it says. Peter. Don't tell me what it says. Play it. He gods. Oh, yes, Marjorie. How long will you be gone? How do I know? I haven't heard from Humpstone yet. I'm still waiting for the call. Well, how many shirts do you want me to pack? How many what? How many shirts will you need? Well, that depends on how long I'll be gone. That's what I say. How long will you be gone? I told you I don't know. Well, how do you don't ask me? foolish questions. Just pack some shirts. That's all. Ye gods, let's keep our heads around here. <laughs> oh, there's the phone, Bertie. Grab it. I got it. Mr. Gilsey's residence. Uh, let me have it, Bertie. Yes, ma'am, he is. Just a second. Leroy, stop pounding that piano. How can I hear? Hello, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve speaking. Uh, it was, what? Water. I'm not the water commissioner, lady. Don't bother me with it. The idea, calling me about it. Doesn't she read the newspapers? Hey, Uncle. I told you, Leroy, I want you to stick at that piece till you master it. I have. I said master, not massacre. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake. Yes, yes. Uncle Mort, do you want me to pack your razor? What's that? Razor? Oh, yes. Uh, Bertie, remind me to get some razor blades before I leave, will you? I'm all out. I will if I can remember. Leroy, maybe you better remind me. What's that? Remind Bertie, Leroy, to remind me to get some razor blades before I go. Come back here, young man. Okay. So, Mr. Gilsey. Yes, I've got it, Bertie. Yeah, hold it, Leroy. Hello, Throckmorton P. Gil yes, I'm the water commissioner. I mean, no, I'm not. What is this? Why are people calling me? I don't care if their line is busy. Don't call me about it. It's no business of mine. This is getting to be a darn nuisance. Here, I'm waiting for an important call. Oh. Yes? Make up your mind, will you? Do you want me to practice or don't you? Uh, just study the notes for a little while, Leroy. Yeah, study them quietly and don't make any noise. 
Hello? Yes, this is Commissioner Gilsey's residence. If it's about the water, Bertie, tell him I'm not at home, and I'm not the commissioner. Mr. Gilsey says if it's about the water, he ain't commissioner, and he ain't at home. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Bertie. That wasn't long distance, was it? No, sir, that was Miss Pettibone. <sighs> well, what do I care? Any more of these calls come, Bertie. Tell him I'm not at home. You understand? Yes, sir. Tell him I left home two weeks ago and I haven't been seen since. Yes, sir. Tell him for all you know, Bertie, I'm Dade. I'll do that. <laughs> uh, boy, George, this is too much. Let me handle it, Bertie. Hello. Now, listen, bud. I've got nothing to do with the water department. I don't care. If you don't like the way things are being run, call up the commissioner. Call up the mayor. Call up Eisenhower, but don't bother me. <laughs> Hello. No... Get off the line, will you, brother? I want to speak to the operator. Operator, this is Throckmorton P. Gillersleeve speaking. Never mind my number. I want to make a complaint. I'm expecting a very important call. I'm being flooded here with calls for the water department, with which I no longer have any connection. I want you to... Listen, sister, you don't have to tell me there's a war on. I want something done about it, and right away. Do you understand? Oh, you can't, eh? Oh, you can't. Well, I'll do something about it, and right now, confound him. Mr. Gilsey, you busted. You darn right, I'll bust it. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. How did you get arrested? Let him come. I'm ready for him. For heaven's sake, what's going on here? I'll just pull the phone out by the roots. <laughs> yes, and I'll do it again. They can fire me out of the water department. They can put an incompetent in my place. But I'll be go to Blazers if I'll take his phone calls. Let him ring me now. <laughs> go ahead and ring. But, Uncle Mort, what about Mr. Humpstone? If he tries to call you now... Humpstone? <laughs> oh, why didn't somebody stop me? Why did you deliberately stand there, Marjorie, and let... Oh, my goodness, I've got to do something. Humpstone might be trying to call me right now, all the way from Detroit. I'll run over to Mrs. Ransom's and phone the call company. I mean, call the company. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. Leela! Mommy! Yeah, and so is Christmas. Leela! Oh, it's you, Throckmorton. Oh, gracious, everything's happening at once here. The phone's ringing. Now sit down and make yourself at home, won't you, while I answer? I was just going to ask you if I could use it. Oh, me, it's just as soon as I answer this. Oh. Uh, Hello? Yes, who's there? Oh, I couldn't guess. Oh, guess it. <laughs> Is it Walter? Who's Walter? Is it, uh, Kent? Not Kent. Well, let me see now. Leela, I'm, I'm expecting a telephone call. It's very important if you could hurry it up. I oh, know. Poochie. It, poochie. <laughs> no? Well, I just simply give up then. Who is it? Oh, oh you. <laughs> I might have known. Come on, come on, Leela. Oh, nothing, just sitting here. Leela, my phone call. It's urgent. Shh. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, no, tell me. This could go on for years, Leela. Excuse me, Throckmorton, please. Yeah, but who is it? Wouldn't you like to know? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just getting comfortable. Go ahead. Oh, for the love of Mike. Silly, of course I'm alone. Uh, look, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I declare anyone would think you were jealous. Leela, excuse me, but i got to interrupt for a minute. Uh, excuse me again, just a second. Couldn't you ask him to call back later or something? But I've only just met him, Throckmorton. I don't know him well enough to be rude to him. Oh. <laughs> but my call is important. Well, I suppose you think this isn't important. All right, wait a minute. Do me a favor, then. When you get through, if you ever do, Leela, call the phone company and tell them my phone is out of order. Very well. Wait. When you've done that, call the long-distance operator and tell her I'm expecting a very important call from out of town. Yes. Tell her I'll be at PV's drugstore, Leela. Mm. Tell her to switch the call to me there. That's a good girl. Oh, Throckmorton, wait. Yeah? Who are you expecting a call from? Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. Hello? Sorry about the interruption. The plumber just arrived. Oh! Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Peavy. You mind if I use your telephone? Not at all. That's what we're in business for. <laughs> Thank you. 
You'll find a phone right in the phone booth there. I don't need to use it this very minute. As a matter of fact, I'm waiting for a long-distance call from Detroit. Detroit? Yeah, I had them transferred here. Marvelous invention, the telephone. Marvelous. Yes, it is. Just to think you can step into that little booth there and people hundreds of miles away can hear what you say. Marvelous. Yes, it is. There's just one thing wrong with it, though, I've noticed. Oh, what's that? Well, most people have nothing to say. Now, you take Mrs. Peavy. Yes? Yeah. Mrs. Peavy is a fine woman. I admire her and I respect her. But when she gets on the phone there with some of her friends, I tell you, I have to go out and walk around the block. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, Peavy. I get the same thing at home. Marjorie now. She's a pretty sensible girl, as girls go. Yeah, she is. But every afternoon, she's on the phone for hours with Francie. And there's more slush, more silly guff. All about some kid around town named Van Johnson. You ever see him around? No, I don't think I have. Neither have I. But to hear them talk, he must be some punkins. I overheard my own niece offering to die for him yesterday. <laughs> oh, telephone. That might be for me. Uh, do you want to take it, Mr. Gildersleeve, or shall I? Uh, you take it, Peavy. See who it's for. I don't trust that phone booth. It's too narrow. Standard phone booth. It, I know, but I got stuck in there once. I'm not taking any unnecessary chances. All right, I hear you. Can't you see I'm coming? Peavy's pharmacy. Why, yes, Leroy, he is. Yeah, just hold the wire. Leroy? Where's he phoning from? He didn't say. Here you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Can you make it? If you get out of my way, I might. Oh, sorry. Uh, darn little coop. Uh, couldn't you sort of lean into it, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Wouldn't they have made it big enough in the first place? Standard phone goes. Standard Hold on, Leroy, I'm coming. Hey, give me a shove, Peavy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Where are you? Well, who's fixed the telephone? You did. Great. I mean, don't ever do that again, Leroy. You might get a shock. Bye, George. How'd you do it? Don't tell me now. I'll be right home, Leroy. I'll be right home. What do you know, PV? Leroy fixed the telephone. Was there something wrong with it? Was there something wrong with it? <laughs> but he just hitched a couple of wires together or something. I don't know. By George, modern kids are wonderful. <laughs> Maybe I'd better call the phone company and tell them to switch the call back there. You got a nickel, Mr. Gilderson? I don't know. I'm wedged in so tight here, I can't get my hand on my pocket, PB. Yeah, let me put a nickel in for you. Yes, thanks, PB. Mm. Dial the operator for me, will you? I can't reach that either. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Hello, operator? I want to report a telephone out of order. Uh, well, I don't know what caused it. It just went dead. I mean, it went dead, but now it's all right again. So if you've sent anybody to fix it, don't bother. Marvelous invention, telephone. <laughs> operator, operator, wait a minute. I'm expecting a call here, long distance. I'd like to have it transferred. Gildersleeve. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. The number here? Uh, what's the number here, PB? It's right on the dial there. I know, but I can't get far enough away to see it. <laughs> Summerfield 34260. Oh, yeah, Summerfield 34260. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's where I am now, operator. But my home phone number is Summerfield 32371. Yeah, that's the one that was out of order, so I called you from another number. I mean, a friend did, to ask you to switch the call when it comes. Uh, here. Do you understand? Huh? I don't either, but... <laughs> I want it here now, and I, I want it at home. Yeah. I just told you, Summerfield 32371. Marvelous invention. <laughs> no, 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 operator. It's not out of order. Listen, operator, it's perfectly clear if you just listen. My phone was out of order, so I went... To... Oh, let it go. I'll be home before you get it straightened out. Just put the call through when it comes. Yes, I better be going. <clears throat> Confound it, Peavy, I'm stuck. No, no. Get me out of here, Peavy. Get me out. No, easy, does I've got to get home, Peavy. That call, I may be missing it. Get me out of no, here. No need to get panicky, Mr. Gildersleeve. We've been through all this before. <laughs> Just deflate. Huh? Let your breath out. Let it out. I haven't taken a breath since I got in here. <laughs> hey, hey, evidently, you've put on a little weight. No, I haven't put on any weight. Well, then it's been redistributed. You <laughs> Stop talking, will you, Peavy? And do something. You got me in here. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. 
Well, it's your fault anyway for having this thing around. Standard phone booth, Mr. Gildersleeve. Stop saying that. It's a booby trap. <laughs> well, <laughs> looks as if we caught one. <laughs> Phoebe. I'm out and I'm off. If you ask me, you've been off for some time. Paul Marge, answer it. Hello? Yes? Oh, my goodness, it's long distance for Uncle Mort. Uh, just a minute, please. That's the call he's expecting. Well, where is he? Well, he said he was coming right home. Uh, hold the wire, please. What is it, Miss Marjorie? Bertie, it's a call for Uncle Mort, and I don't know what to tell them. Uh, run to the window, Leroy, and see if he's coming. Here, give me that, Miss Marjorie. I know what to tell him. But Bertie, I... Your just... uncle told me what to tell him. Hello? Here he is. Long distance, Uncle. Huh? I'm sorry. Mr. Gillsleeve ain't here. He ain't been around for two weeks. I expect he's probably dead. <laughs> Bertie! How's that for telling Mr. Gillsleeve? Bertie, that's a call I've been waiting all day for. Well, over the brakes, kid. <laughs> Leroy, give me that telephone. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gillsleeve. Never mind. Just... Operator? Operator? Operator! That's the kind of service you get. Operator! When you want them, you can get them. When you don't want them, they call you up. Operator! I pay good money every month for this. The darn thing. Uncle Mark! I won't have it in the house! Not again! This time I mean it, confound it! There. Let me see you fix that, Leroy. What a character! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say just a few words on behalf of an organization to which all of us owe our lives, our freedom, and our hope, hope of security, the United States Navy. On October 27th, each year, we celebrate Navy Day. This year, Navy Day will mean almost more than it ever has before, because our Navy is now the strongest naval power on this earth. The number of warships in the fleet has been almost tripled since 1939, and 30,000 naval planes are scheduled for delivery this year. 30,000 planes. I hope the Japs are listening. But though the Navy has done a tremendous job in this war and has the men and materiel to finish it, we mustn't think it's going to be easy. Navy officials estimate it will take at least a year and a half or two years to knock out the Japanese after the war in Europe is over. The Japanese are tough, ladies and gentlemen. They can still increase their production, and their army is not yet up to full strength. So it's up to us here on the home front to stand behind the Navy in the big job that's still ahead. And these are the ways we can help. First, stay on the job in Navy yards and factories. Second, we can maintain our Navy's high morale by writing to the men. Let them know we appreciate what they've done and are doing. But let's not write as if we expected the war to be over in a few months. Third, the Navy needs waves and nurses. Women between the ages of 20 and 36 can release Naval men for active duty. Just go to the nearest Navy recruiting office. Or if you're a registered nurse between 21 and 40, you can be commissioned as an ensign. For information on this, write to the Surgeon General at the Navy Department in Washington. The Navy needs our help, ladies and gentlemen. Navy Day is next October, next Friday, October the 27th, but we ought to make every day Navy Day till the war is won. If we stop and think how much we owe the Navy, I know we'll all be glad to do whatever we can. Good night. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting